Well, good afternoon, folks, and welcome to another review video on my channel. Uh, this is Lee, your virtual airline pilot, back with you again. It's Friday, the 27th of October, just before the weekend. Um, I said I would try and get this review out um, during the week uh, to make it the third one, and here we are, we're having a go at it. So where are we? Well, we're in the Caribbean, eastern sort of central Caribbean. We're in Antigua, and this is VC Bird International Airport in the island of Antigua and Barbuda. Tango Alpha Papa Alpha. This is a payware scenery by Tropical Sim, and you're looking at the new version 2 for the PC version of Flight Sim 2020. They did have an earlier version, I believe, and this is the brand new version 2 with all new features and upgrades. The download is 139 meg and it installs at 372 meg, so it's not huge, um, but there's quite a bit to see. It's available from Sim Market, currently at a price of 19 euros and 20 cents, which equates to roughly 20 dollars and 25 cents US, or 16 pounds and 71 pence UK. As ever, the US and UK prices are all estimates taken from the euro, and they do include tax or VAT, which of course may vary depending on which country you're in. So let's have a look at the list of features. We have highly detailed rendition of VC Bird International Airport, TAPA, located on the island of Antigua. We've got a completely new terminal building featuring a fully modelled 3D interior with layout according to the real world terminal, full night illumination, native MSFS dynamic lighting, functional animated jetway, um, and we'll see that during the jetway test, seamless integrator integration with the default MSFS scenery. Use of the MSFS SDK, the Software Development Kit, Flight Tim Materials, and use of the MSFS SDK native GITF models. Still not entirely sure what GITF means. Um, maybe somebody can let me know in the comments. Um, but it looks good, and uh, yeah, we'll have a close look at it. But first, some history. So, Antigua VC Bird International Airport, Tango Alpha Papa Alpha, is a public use international airport owned and operated by the Antigua and Barbuda Airport Authority. The airport is located on the island of Antigua, 5 miles or 8 kilometres northeast of St. John's, the capital of Antigua and Barbuda. The airport was originally built and operated in 1941 by the United States Army Air Force as Coolidge Airfield and named after Captain Hamilton Coolidge, um, a United States Army Air Force pilot was killed in World War I. Flying units assigned to the airfield included the 35th Bombardment Squadron, or the 25th Bombardment Group from 1941 to 42, the 12th Bombardment Squadron, 25th Bombardment Group from 43 to 44, and the 4th Tactical Reconnaissance Squadron, or the Antilles Air Command, from May until October 1945. Renamed Coolidge Air Force Base in 1948, the airport was closed as a result of budgetary cutbacks in 1949, with the right of re-entry retained by the United States. Agreements were subsequently reached with the United Kingdom and later the Antigua government upon independence for the establishment and maintenance of a missile tracking of missile tracking facilities. Antigua Air Station was established on a portion of the former Coolidge Air Base. As of 2011, NASA continues to utilize Antigua facility for launch tracking services on an as-needed basis and did so for the launch of the Mars Science Laboratory on the 26th of November 2011. Upon the closure of the Air Force Base in 1949, the airport became a civilian facility. It was known as Coolidge International Airport until 1985, after which it was renamed in honour of Sir Vere Cornwall Bird, born in 1910, the first Prime Minister of Antigua and Barbuda. In 2012, the airport announced the construction of a second terminal, which became operational in 2015, with all flights operating from this new terminal. The terminal has four jet bridges, modern security screening facilities, up-to-date passenger processing and monitoring facilities, and a CCTV security system. The terminal contains 46 check-in counters, 15 self-check-in desks, five baggage carousels, a mini food court, multiple VIP lounges, a bank, retail stores, first-class lounges, restaurants, and other facilities. 
Other improvements included a newly constructed car park parallel to the old terminal along with other airport offices. So there you go, some history for you, and as you can see, like many airports in this region, they often started out as military facilities um, owned by the United States government and others. So uh, let's now have a look at this runway in detail. So runways, and as you can see, I've lowered the lighting. It's 25 past four in the afternoon. As you can see, the sun tends to go down fairly quickly um, in these latitudes. So let's have a look at this. BC Bird International Airport operates a single runway 2507 measuring 9,967 feet or 3,038 meters in length and is made from asphalt. The airport lies at an elevation of 60 feet or 18 meters and sits within the GMT UTC minus 4 hours time zone. Now Antigua does not observe Daylight Saving Time, or DST, and with the UK currently on British summer time until the 29th of October, Antigua is presently five hours behind the UK. So let's start with runway 07, and you're looking down the throat of it now. It features high intensity runway lighting, high intensity airfield lighting system, runway end identifier lighting system, and precision approach path indicators on the left side. And as you can see from looking here, that's all there. You've got the high intensity lighting system. The pappies are on the left. They look actually further down the runway, but remember you have a displaced threshold here for takeoffs. Landing touchdown zone is here. We also got approach lights here too, which is uh, again, they're on the charts, so that's correct. Landing options for this runway, you have RNAV GNS approach, a 12 DME arc approach option as well and the VOR approach option too. So that's runway 07. Let's quickly look at the other end, runway 25. So here we are looking down the throat of runway 25, which also has a displaced threshold, as you can see. And runway 25 features the same high intensity runway lighting. And again, precision approach path indicators on the left side. Approach options for this runway, well you have the same 12 mile DME arc approach and also VOR approach options here. So no instrument landing system at either end of the runway. You should also note that this airport is for day operations only. I'm not actually sure um, when they stop operations. As you can see the sun is going down. We're 25 past 4 in the afternoon, approaching half past 4. It's winter time, October 2023. So there obviously comes a point where they don't allow any further landings or takeoffs. Also, aircraft above 29,484 kilos maximum takeoff weight must not use taxiway alpha, but use the turning pads on the runways to make the turn. So for example, turn, taxiway alpha is down here, it's the furthest one on the right. That one you can't use, most airliners can't use. I mean, 737, the A320s are so 68 tons and above so they can't use those taxiways if you pass them on a landing you need to go right down to the end and use the turning pads so that does it for runways obviously guys you look at the charts when you want to fly in here but uh, as you can see from these various shots um, beautiful another beautiful island location and um, fun to try and land and the sharp eyed amongst you will have noticed this old what looks like an old runway certainly the markings are still there to some extent so this was clearly an old runway um, and no longer used so that does it for runways let's now have a look at the jetways that we see on the terminal and do the test okay so jetways so here's my boeing 737 parked on stand three let's test the jetway and see how it looks okay the wheels turn the head turns as well that's actually quite a nice motion, it's at the right speed and visually the jetway looks quite nice. Stairs are raised so they don't go into the concrete which is good. Um, this should move a bit more but I'm not going to complain about that really. Right, that's pretty close um, and it looks like it's gone through the skin as most of them do um, but from here it looks like a good fit. Let's get a bit closer so it has gone through the skin here, but that still looks like a pretty good fit. Let's check out from the other side. Right, again, it's not looking too bad at all from this side. Let's go inside, open the door and have a look um, from inside the jetway door. 
So there's the floor, that's right up to the aircraft side, which is fine. And there, looking above, that's actually a pretty good fit. Both left and right sides, actually they don't appear to have gone through the skin at all. They're very close, but it looks to be a fairly good fit. Let's open the door and um, see how the door works inside the jetway head. Right, again, that's not too bad. I actually can't go back too far because if I go back just a little bit, we go through the closed door. But as you can see, that's quite good. It stays within the jetway configuration. And the top does too. Let's check it out from inside. So there's a view looking out from inside the airport, airport, the aircraft even, and you've got the closed door in front of you. Realistically, not bad at all. Actually, the head fit is probably one of the best. Um, not the best, there are one or two better ones, but that's pretty good. Um, certainly for Tropical Sim, um, but it's, it's really good. So let's disconnect the jetway. Once again, as you can see, the head cover springs back completely pretty quickly slight delay before the motion starts but that's a pretty good retraction pretty good indeed and as you can see, the jetway itself looks pretty good actually. Um, it's very clean, as indeed is the terminal to the right, but we'll get into that later. But the jetway works pretty good. Um, certainly the head connection is excellent to the aircraft. So that's the jetway test done. Let's uh, get uh, down to it proper now and have a look at the airport. Um, just remember, this is version 2, the newer version that supersedes the old version they've done. Let's just see how much, how good it is. So I'm going to start in the far eastern end of the airport here, um, so you can look at the um, Antigua Air Station, which is right in front of us here. And we will move across and uh, literally do an airside tour of the airport. Um, probably the one thing that strikes me right away, um, you've got this here, which as you get lower, um, doesn't look too brilliant because it's not animated. It's not the um, typical uh, waves and stuff from the default um, scenery from the new from flight simulator this is all uh, kind of fixed photo um, which looks okay the higher you get but this close it, it doesn't really quite work for me but let's ignore that for a start and let's get across and have a look at the airport itself so as you can see we come over the station there I'm just going to pass over here as well very slowly here's the old runway you can see the markings and there you can see a little harbour with a few boats all photoreal scenery unfortunately not 3D as we get back to the airport though you can see some of the detail um, and this all looks quite pleasant really I haven't seen really version 1 so I'm not entirely certain how good or indeed how how bad or lacking that one was but I can certainly see this is quite nice it's typical tropical sim um, they choose to leave a lot of photo scenery in various places and do 3D on areas that they only really want to do. And um, I get that and that's fine. But as you can see, nice detail here within the terminal um, and approach areas. And it looks, looks lovely. Not much weathering on the terminal there, a little bit on the walls at the bottom. Um, and the airside road, but the airside road's been done quite nicely. Um, you know, and it all looks fine. It does look quite nice. Some decent foliage. The buildings are nicely modelled. There's the tower. And here as we go further west. Lots of clutter. Um, and the palm trees. It looks nice. It really does. been quite nicely modelled. There you've got the airside fence behind the trees and just to the left here, here's the main taxiway and here 
is taxiway alpha this is the exit you can't use if you're a heavy jet and uh, interestingly enough as you can see this end of the taxiway has been barriered off not really sure why that is um, but anyway so basically if you come in on a long landing you have to go right to the end of the runway in fact you've got what, a couple of turning pad options here you've got one here you've got another one there at the threshold um, and if if it's a really long landing you've got to can go all the way back there you do your 180 turn you come back up the runway and then you turn off the runway at Bravo or Charlie so this is what the charts say you can't use Alpha if you're a 737 A320 or anything heavier anything over 29 tons um, you can't use this taxiway unfortunately but uh, that depends on how realistic you guys want to do it it's all all pretty good so let's swing back again this time go towards the land side area and I'm going slowly so we can have a better look at some of the building modeling that's been done um, and it looks nice this is um it just looks better than the sort of average stuff that tropical sim turn out um, it just looks a lot better there you've got fuel dump area there fuel tanks that have been weathered okay the cars look good um, and they're parked nicely unfortunately the ground is not 3d car parks are not 3d at all which is a real pity would have been nice to see them go the extra mile and do that so here we are coming landside and again it's not 3d it's photo real I mean, it's okay but it really would have been nice to see it done properly no people certainly no people landside outside the terminal oh well, that's the old terminal by the way so let's have a look at the new terminal which has been done and looks like it's been done a bit better and now we've got some people stood outside got a bus parked right in the middle of the uh, the road there not really sure why but this looks a lot better airside road you've got cars parked people standing outside very nice signage on the building there and as you can see from the right hand side there's full internal modeling which is really nice and we come to the back of the big hangars here this is a closed one it's just really nice you know it's uh it's very acceptable in the end it come down, comes down to whether you think what's been done is worth the price but at the moment it looks very acceptable very acceptable indeed so for you pilots let's have a look at the stands as they are properly this is all very very white very sun bleached here um, nice to see the um, fuel pump connections here they're not too sharp but they're there at least um, but the ground markings are fine everything looks pretty good now looking from this side um, you can see I mean this has been really quite nicely done here it's quite funny I mean they leave a lot of photo scenery which doesn't look too good and then you get to places like this and you're suddenly surprised by just how good this is um, and you've got a slightly animated flag I mean what can you say excellent very nice and they're looking in through the windows there you can see people inside the terminal airside very nice I like that and looking down the airside road I mean that looks very believable even the vehicle here close up is a lot better than some of the ones we saw a moment ago landside and you've got the detail here looks lovely you know this is this is a big improvement um, in terms of what tropical sim tend to put out I think that's the best way to say it so let's have a little run down the airside road here just to have a look at what it looks like from this point of view you know lots of ground clutter looks it looks great it looks very nice trying to go slowly here so here's the old terminal some nice clutter bits and pieces here it's very nice 
no real complaints at all here I mean the waddling's lovely some nice foliage the trees and everything I mean this really makes a scenery makes makes it look sort of real so let's have a look at the tower while we're here see if anything has been done Okay, not even a tower constructed. I, I, this, this kind of annoys me a lot, really. Okay, they've chosen not to develop the tower. I get that. But here, you go into the tower from the outside, and there's not even an interior. Nothing has even been, you know, it's not constructed. And I, I don't get why that is. I mean, look, we're looking out over the airfield. Lovely view there. Would have been so nice to see the window paint in a way. However, there's the tower building seen from landside. No complaints about the building at all. It's just this is um, a complete facade because there's nothing inside. Arguably, this shouldn't even be seen here. Um, and I, I, I don't know, I'm not a developer, so it's hard to say, but I, I tend to think that it wouldn't be too much to actually construct the inside with the windows. Anyhow, well, let's leave that um, and carry on here. But by and large, the buildings here are of a, of a good order. They're modelled nicely. So are the buses and vehicles here. I mean, this is nice. There you've got a fuel station there. It's lovely. It's very nice. So while we're here, let's look at the entry and exits to the runway. Here you've got wigwags. I don't know if they don't look as though they work. We'll lower the lighting later on to have a look at the night light and you can see. There's the 2507 marker and notifying taxiway Bravo. I, I tend to think this should be here, not out in the grass here. You know, it needs to be as near as possible to the actual taxiway it's going to be used by the aircraft. For the pilots to be able to see if they ever got low visibility here fog or anything like that i mean this really wouldn't be too helpful i think this really needs to be placed here just my thoughts maybe anybody who lives out here and knows this airport can tell me if this is really how they've modeled it in the real world and here's the other side same is true out in the grass again we've got a stop sign here um not really sure about that but um there we go as you can see we've got exit signs which are fine there and you've got the blue airfield edge lights marking the edge of the airport boundary. So we go across this side and have a look at the um, the air station here and the radar situation that they've got over here. So we just slow down a little bit. There's a nice little house down there. So various hangars and bits and pieces along here. Nice big open hangar there for you to park some of your general aviation aircraft and another one there too. In fact there's plenty of parking here. A quick look at the little port bay here that we've seen. Um, and this is a nice little area. Could have been so much better if it was 3D modelled. And once again you've got the photo boats sitting there which really don't do the scenery justice. This is unfortunate. This is where it kind of falls down a bit in my opinion. So let's go and have a look at the air station. Here you can see the um, satellite dishes. Quite simplified, nothing fancy. They've modelled it, but um, modelled it just to a, a relatively basic kind of standard. No time spent on this at all, really. Just uh, fairly basic. But again, all of this looks pretty good from altitude. When you come into land and you're looking out, 
you're coming into land and looking outside it all looks a lot more real Right, a little slow past landside so you can get a closer look at the people here. They seem to be static, they don't seem to be animated, but again, I'm not worried about that at all. This is um, arguably the nicest part of the scenery. And uh, I love the way they've done the airport sign up there, that looks very, very nice indeed. So let's go inside and have a look and see how that is. So in through the outdoor, as they say. <laughs> and this looks very pleasant. Very nice indeed. The detail is excellent. The modelling is good. Um, the people figures are really quite good, actually. So we get up close to look at the people figures, and you can see, I mean, they're, they're, they're good quality figures. Um, and, and that really makes it, that really helps in a scenery like this. So we go right up close to the sign, and as you can see, it doesn't lose its um, sharpness. It's really quite good. That's 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 excellent. There's the restrooms, and you've got people sitting over there. And here we go, landside. You can have a look, and you can see through the screens to the right there. You've got security, which is good. And people waiting to go through there. Well, it looks nice. Let's have a close-up look at this Arrivals and Departures board. Okay, it does blur a bit there. But as you go back, it looks a lot better. We continue the tour. I mean, it, this looks very pleasant. It kind of puts me in two minds. I mean, they've done a lovely job here on the internal modelling of the terminal. Arguably, you know, the terminal and the internal modelling and the outside there, arguably the best part of the airport. Notwithstanding the jetways, which fit really well, I have to say. But um, you have to one wonder why that you've got this particular part done so well and the rest of the airport really is a little bit of a letdown in terms of modelling. So much photo scenery when it should have been 3D. But this is nice, you know, look, you've got your automated, automated machines there. And loads of check-in agents, which is a big plus for me. And the models are great. Some lovely looking ladies around. Um, lots of... Um, variation here as well in the in the human models some people seated there's a close-up look at the check-in desks I mean look at the number of check-in agents really really good and the passengers waiting and their baggage um, and some really good signage above there it's just you know it's excellent done a wonderful job inside on the terminal um, but nowhere near as good on the outside and I really don't have any answer as to why that might be so let's go through into security it says customs here so all right okay so we're now in the um, arrivals part of the terminal here are the baggage reclaim units And again, very, very nicely detailed and modelled. Loads of people, um, and as you can see, no real effect on frame rate. I'm droning the camera all over the place, and no stutters or problems. And you've got customs officers. You know, this is great. It's really good. And again, you've got people waiting for their baggage. I mean, it's, it's great. <laughs> no complaints at all. So just a quick shot from the above here, you can see obviously over the um, partitions there, you can see customs and arrivals. And there you can see the offices on the upper level. So we go up on the escalator here, or up the stairs, or in the lifts, whichever way you want, to the upper level here, and this is where we find security. 
again loads of people models here and as you can see look no no problems with the frame rate at all I mean this is impressive and they've done a, a really nice job with this got no complaints and um, here we are airport security and look how detailed the machines are and the archways who man the equipment as well so let's quickly tour airside you've got a shop there on the left okay it's a photograph and it's not quite as high resolution as it needs to be it's close but not quite and again here plenty of people look plenty of things going on um, and it could be because there's no actual animations that's why the frame rate is, is not being lost at all they're all static people no animated people at all um, and as you can see I'm moving the camera with no real stutters or issues at all all looks quite nice those photographic areas could be do with being at a slightly higher resolution to make them more believable but again look check-in desks information desks complete with people manning them so from a security check let's just go the other way and again you got the same standard the same quality it's, it's very very nice indeed like I said the only real complaints here the um, these images here need to be at a higher resolution to make them believable but it looks good you know it looks it looks lovely it's a typical airside area duty free shop there now here we've got the entrance to one of the gates and again passengers and people milling around which is exactly what you got you got two, two check-in agents there this is British Airways so there would normally be a triple seven parked out here now let's go down the jetway with the passengers here and see whether we can get to the end of the jetway as they say, as they say. Go very steadily down here and again these passenger models don't look too bad at all even close up get away with them sorry love but here the jetways nicely modeled okay the windows are missing but um, you know this is this is good let's see how far we can go the flooring is nice so there's a doorway on the side there okay so we would go normally through into this one and again okay see the jetway structure is modeled unlike the control tower but you've got no windows and no side structure as such until you get to the end of the jetway there we are looking back so as you can see the terminal interior um, is, is so nicely modeled it's very very nice the only criticism is the images for the, the shops need to be at a higher resolution but the passenger figures are excellent frame no loss of frame rate at all um, and the terminal itself has been really very nicely done and here you've got this sort of little restaurant seating area out on the end of the terminal which looks very nice so there's a daytime tour let's drop it down to dusk now um, and see what the lighting looks like okay so 20 to 5 in the evening okay we've gone past the time where we looked at the runways as you can see um, the sunset is way up upon us now um, technically according to the charts you know I, you shouldn't be landing here at this time of the evening um, but I don't know there's nothing on, on the charts or anything that I can find to determine wh exactly when the airport shuts down or basically doesn't accept any more air, air traffic but having said that here you can see I mean the night the night lighting is lovely this airport again it's a lovely airport that comes to life in the darkness hours looks fine during the day 
but it appears to look better as the, as the lighting goes down because the night lighting just makes it look so much good, so much better. So there you can see taxiways Bravo and Charlie here. Blue airfield edge lighting, um, no green centerline lighting, but as you can see here at dusk, even at dusk, there's enough light here for you to find your way quite easily off the runway. There you've got additional lighting for the buildings that are on the old disused runway. So here's taxiway Bravo, and you can see, easily e easy to see how the signage is lit. I, I'm sorry, I still believe that uh, these two should be much closer in. Um, you've got the wigwags, but of course they don't work. Would have been nice to see them working. But by contrast, look at that. Doesn't that look nice? You know, I'd be tempted to fly in here after dark just because of how nice it looks um, and ignore the chart warnings. But doesn't it look lovely? So as before, let's take a tour. There you can see the fire station, which I, to be honest, I didn't really notice during the daytime. But it looks so much nicer at night. Okay, some little mediocre lighting on some of the buildings there, but again, it sort of brings them to life. It's good to see some of the headlights on some of the vehicles operating, and there in the distance land side you can see more lighting that uh, kind of brings things to life a little bit more. And as you can see, it looks lovely, doesn't it? Very nice. So we go airside over the ramp here, over the top of the buildings. Um, nice view inside the terminal. You can see some static passengers. Um, and the lighting is good. It's not overdone. There you can see some more passengers. All really nice actually. And down there. So that's headland side there you can see the little restaurant little area that we looked at during the day. And this all looks very nice, apart from the fact that the ground, the roads and stuff are not really fully 3D developed. So here you can see as we go across the road here, I mean it's nice. Hmm, the sign isn't lit up above there, which um, I don't know, I would have expected to see, but maybe I'm wrong, we'll see. But here the landside lighting looks great. And there you can see inside the terminal. It's lovely. It's very nice. So here we go landside of the old terminal. And that's nice as well. Okay, now we're getting a few Osobo globes. But uh, yeah, no problems. But some very, very little, not very nice lighting on the buildings. Real pity about the control tower. I mean, I think they missed a chance there. They really did. But as you can see, oh, this looks nice. I wonder if this is an arena of some sort. Again, I'm sort of hoping that we've got a, maybe a couple of people who live out here or have been out here regularly and knows what this all is. This does look like a stadium. Looks like seating there on the left. So let's just do a quick run landside over the airport here. There's the moon in the distance. I mean, it's a lovely place. And it really does look nice in at this time of the day. So 
So let's just go down the old runway here and have a look and see what we've got. And as you can see, some stunning lighting down here as well. So you GA people are going to be well catered for, even the inside of the hangars are done look. Okay, let's drop it down to night time now and see um, just how much, if any, the lighting comes up anymore. Okay, 10 p.m. local time, and as you can see, the sun is completely gone now, and we're, the darkness is fully upon us. Um, I like the lighting effects here. Again, plenty of light on the main apron, should you, should you ever get permission to land here during after dark. Again, you can see the internal parts of the hangars have been done, and the lighting is very nice here. And they're looking down the runway, uh, you know, it's not total darkness like you get in the Far East. Um, you've got the lights of the city sort of lighting up the area a little bit. And even in at 10 o'clock at night, dead at night, this looks very nice. Plenty of light, um, both airside and landside, to be honest. So there's a shot looking landside. It's great, it's fine. It's, um, it's a lovely airport, it's been nicely modelled. And uh, yeah, no real complaints. It's lovely. So let's bring the dawn up. So 5.15 in the morning, as you can see, the sun's coming up and casting this red glow on the buildings and airside. And uh, it's, that's great. It's, it's, I, love, I love to see that. There's the main new terminal ramp at the sunrise. Very nice indeed. And they're looking towards the threshold. Um of the old runway, the sun's coming up over the horizon there and there you've got the um, air station here and the GA hangars there, all really really nice. Okay, 6am and time to give you my thoughts and conclusions. Um, this is a difficult one, do I think it's worth the money? I think it's a little on the expensive side, so much has been left to photo scenery that could have been done 3D to make it look so much better. Starting with the pilot's requirements, all that you need is there. Airside, um, jetways, parking, everything you need is fine. Um, I still think it's perfectly okay here in terms of sort of after dark to land here. Okay, no instrument landing system, but you've got RNAV approach on 2.5 and um, it doesn't get as dark as it gets in far east of Asia. Um, so landing sort of after dark or even late dusk as we've seen I think should be perfectly okay and they've done a lovely job on the on the lighting this airport definitely looks better after dark after the sun goes down um, what do I like about it yeah the terminal the new terminal modeling is excellent inside it, it's stunning um, okay it doesn't have some of the things that other um, developers have the um, the photo images for the shops could be at a higher resolution. Probably that's my real only criticism. But what I do like is they've got passengers and people all over the place. And it's not affecting the frame rate. And those people figures are of a good quality. And you've got uh, check-in agents behind the um, check-in desks. Security people in security. Um, um, passengers waiting out land side of the terminal. The terminal was nicely modelled apart from the low resolution images. It's a joy, it really is. An airside, you, you, it's going to be good. Um, the downsides, it's just so much has been left to photo reel. You've got a lovely little port um, over here that could look so much better. Um, this looks, obviously, as you can see, this looks a lot better from this high up. But as you get lower down, it tends to look a little bit less good, as it were. Um, hard to really describe it. I would like to see a version 3 where they've taken on the uh, the job of 3D modelling, extending 3D modelling um, to some of this which could make it look so much better. Um, it's, for me it's probably worth about 14 and a half, 15 euros, certainly not 19. Yes there's been a lot of work done in the terminal, that's the standout um, show stuff, this real, real showpiece for me. The terminal's done very, very nicely, um, and the whole airport looks wonderful after dark. Um, and that makes it probably worth the purchase. If you're looking for VC Bird Airport, I mean, this is a good rendition of it, and kudos for Tropical Sim for taking on doing a second version. But there's a lot that hasn't been done that I would like to see done. 
That said, it's a nice airport, and if you want this airport, yeah, this is the version to go for. Probably look out for a, maybe a sale at some point in the soon. If it comes down to about 15 euros, it would be a bargain. But at the moment, on my opinion, it's just a little on the expensive side. But, um, you know, on the plus side, it's a lovely airport. Modelling's good. Um, <clears throat> it could be a wonderful place to fly into, uh, definitely place to um to fly into I obviously will I certainly will do this myself so there you go Antigua VC Bird International Airport on the island of Antigua Tango Alpha Papa Alpha pay West scenery by Tropical Sim and this is the new version 2 for the PC version of Flight Sim 2020 downloads 139 meg installs at 372 meg and it's available from Sim Market priced at 19 euros and 20 cents which equates to roughly $20.25 US or £16.71 UK. US and UK prices are estimates from the Euro and they include tax or VAT, which of course can vary depending on where you are when you make your purchase. It's a lovely airport um, and uh, you know it brings this part of the world. It gets great to these Caribbean airports coming to life. Definitely looks better after dark in the low light. Um, but in my opinion, slightly on the expensive side, and I believe there's more to do. They really need to work on the photoreal areas and bring so much more of it into 3D, um, and you'll have something of a stunning airport to look at. So there you go, folks. I'm wrapping up this review. Thanks for your time. Thanks for watching. Um, obviously, let me know in the comments what you think. Um, and uh, yeah, join me next week where we'll be looking at um, some more airports and two more reviews. And hopefully I'm going to get a couple of adventure flights in as we approach um, the winter area. Um, things are going to get a little bit more challenging for you um, instrument rated pilots. So thank you for joining me. This is Lee, your virtual airline pilot, wrapping up this review saying thank you very much. I will see you in the next video. Take care. Bye bye for now.